Okay, so let's let's kind of backtrack here because the FAA has had some issues with SpaceX for a while. September 9th. I know it's a few days ago, but just bear with me here. There's a there's a story arc here that we that we have to go through. Uh, Starship Flight 2, Elon Musk posted this. Uh, Unstack Ship 25. It's beside the uh, booster now, and there is the final preparations before the flight of IFT2. IFT2 will, of course, launch from Starbase, Texas, and the booster will go into the Gulf of Mexico, and the ship will go off the coast of Kauai if everything goes right. Right. IFT one didn't go so so great. A couple minutes in, um, the thing blew up. They had to blow it up because it wasn't separating. Went wildly out of control, tumbled through um, the space above the Gulf of Mexico. Eventually it did blow up. They did self-terminate it and it blew apart over the Gulf of Mexico. So IFT one, a considerable success, you know, considering that, you know, they Elon gave it a 50 percent chance to get off the pad. So IFT1, success. IFT2, there are about a thousand changes to the booster in the ship and also a ton of changes uh, to the mount and to the, uh, you know, to the launch pad itself. So congrats to SpaceX. This is a few days ago to SpaceX for completing and documenting the 57 items required by the FAA for flight two of Starship. We're noting that six of the 63 items refer to later flights. And these are the ones that are for later flights are grayed out, but we'll take a look at these real quick. These are for uh, C-13, which is improved igniter seal design as a future action. There's a bunch of these in here, 90 plus cameras, which is one of my favorite things. They have 90 cameras inside of the booster in the ship to detect leakage during operations. So kind of mitigating what Elon was talking about before, about like not blowing up on the pad. If that was a success, them not blowing up on the pad, they have a, a much less chance to blow up on the pad this time because they have inscrut increased scrutiny of leak checks, which is C9 here, and 90 plus cameras to detect leakage, leak capture and drain hardware for valves at a certain type. And most of these are kind of vague. Um, so you don't really know exactly what they are or where these things are. Like, um, replace accessible valves of a certain type with new design. V v accessible valves of a certain type with new design. Okay, we gotta we gotta redesign these valves of a certain type. Don't know what those are. It shows that SpaceX and the FAA are working together to get Starship off the ground again. IFT two to fly. And there are a few other things here, six of those things that are future actions. Redesign network architecture, improve design of hot manifold, improve oxygen valve seal. But there are a few things that are important for the uh, future due to SpaceX, FAA, and the Fish and Wildlife Service all working together to make sure that SpaceX doesn't endanger the environment, people, or things when they launch the next Starship. That's the FAA's job. They're, the FAA is literally there to make sure nobody and no thing and no animal or environment um, gets harmed during launch or subsequent actions thereafter, like say if the, the re-entry of a spacecraft. So we have verify flight safety design and then add water cooled pad deck redesign of launch pad deck, improve assumptions for new pad deck design, and improve pad deck design documentation. We don't know what the documentation is, but we know what the new design is, which is um, the water cooling underneath, um, the the sprinkler system, the deluge system, whatever you want to call it, and improve pad design process. Hi, take a second, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. That tells YouTube to send you more Starship content, whether it's my channel or somebody else's channel. It'll tell the algorithm, hey, I like SpaceX. I like Starship. I want to see more of this stuff. So if you hit like and subscribe, then it'll show you that stuff. Thanks. So pad design, of course, yeah, that's super important. Uh, they have to make sure that they have, uh, in Elon's words, the best part is no part, right? So they want to keep this as simple as possible. They don't want like a giant trench and they can't even build it down there. It's too close to the water levels of the Gulf of Mexico. They just can't dig into the ground. And if they were to build a massive um, like del deluge system and flame trench, it would be, 
years probably before the Army Corps of Engineers signed off on a design. They've already tried it. You know, they've already um, went through the system of like, what if we could do this? What if we could do this system, this a flame trench system? And the Army engineers were just like, yeah, it doesn't look good. So what they have now is what they what they're probably going to stay with. And the important part about this is that all of these things are in the FAA's hands now. So we have uh, Congress to SpaceX for complete and documented 57 items required by the FAA for flight two of Starship, says Elon Musk. So the good thing is SpaceX completed these off to the FAA, right? Booster static fire. Here's the thing, uh, a, a tweet. I call it a thing. It's a, it's a tweet. It's an X. It's a post, whatever, a post on X by SpaceX. Additional views from Booster 9's second static fire. Um, a little bit different now. Booster 9, the new boosters are static firing on the pad, but they have the deluge system installed. So a ton of water flows everywhere while they do these. And there is not as much or there's zero uh, pad concrete flying everywhere like the IFT-1 launch. Okay, so there's the deluge system. And as you can see, the most powerful rocket in existence um, didn't see any debris, right? It cuts out pretty quickly at the end there. Um, and they do fade out really quickly, which um, I would would have loved to see a little, like a couple more seconds, the 10 second clip. Give me like 13, 14 would be great. But as you can see, there's no, there's no, um, there's no ejection of concrete or anything like that. Looks like the deluge system is working pretty good. Deluge system looks like it's working pretty good at this point. So it seems like there are no issues with the pad now. Okay. But there's always a but, right? Like this one's a pretty big cakey butt. Uh, there are a few things. Uh, this is from Eric Bergen. This is from a few days ago. Uh, SpaceX conducted a test flight of Starship Super Heavy at Boca Chica, Texas. This is a this is a statement from the FAA, by the way. Update from the FAA on Boca Chica and Starship Flight Two. Uh, completed a mishap investigation with FAA oversight. Uh, this investigation analyzed the launch mishap events and corrective actions before it is authorized to conduct a second Starship Super Heavy launch. SpaceX must obtain a modified license from the FAA that addresses all safety. And this is the key part: environmental and other regulatory requirements as part of the license application determination process. The FAA will review new environmental information, including changes related to the launch pad, like we were talking about before, as well as other proposed vehicle and flight modifications, all those 63 things that Elon was talking about. Um, and the FAA, <coughs> FAA will complete written reevaluation to the 2022 programmatic environmental assessment. The FAA is going to look at the things that Elon and SpaceX have said that they've fixed during the uh, programmatic environmental assessment uh, that allowed them to launch IFT-1. And if those still stay in place, um, then that's great. And if SpaceX completed those tasks and continue to complete those tasks, that's great. Uh, but if Elon and SpaceX has veered away at any, in any moment, uh, they could open up another program programmatic environmental assessment type study at Starbase. Um, evaluating new environmental information, including Endangered Species Act consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. That's a big deal. Fish and Wildlife Service, if they see that SpaceX, like I said before, if they see that SpaceX had veered away in any direction with any endangered species at Boca Chica, and there's numerous endangered species that live and breed in the Boca Chica area, um, there are just, there, there's consequences that SpaceX must uh, deal with. Some of them could be um, mitigating those circumstances. How will these endangered species be affected by a SpaceX launch in the future? Did the deluge system um, endanger anything more so than usual? Is this new water that's being, you know, uh, sent everywhere while they launch is that interrupting the natural flow of any species in Boca Chica? So there are a few things that we have to think about here. Um, 
so additional environmental review will be required. Um, the contents of the PA do not remain valid. Wait, if the FAA determines through the WR process, sorry, I, I didn't read that part. <laughs> I didn't want to freak you out for a second. If the FAA determines through the uh, the written, written re, re, uh, re-evaluation uh, process that the contents of the PEA do not remain valid in light of the changes proposed for Flight 2, additional environmental review will be required. Accordingly, the FAA has not authorized SpaceX's proposed Flight 2. So they can't fly yet. And the FAA will provide updates with the notification of any license determination or results of additional environmental review. Okay. So that brings us to now. Okay. Any sort of anything from the deluge system, um, if they find any contaminants in it whatsoever that are above the levels that are safe for any species at the Boca Chica area. Um, the Fish and Wildlife Service will take a hard look at what's going on at SpaceX's Starbase. What that means is that there could be ramifications. Um, and I'm not an environmental scientist. Um, I don't work with um, the environment in my day job. But these are things that the Fish and Wildlife Service do work with. They work with uh, wildlife, they work with water tables, things like that. Any contaminants that SpaceX has shown to add to those water tables or the environment whatsoever down there that could be detrimental to any species that lives in the Boca Chica area, in the Starbase area, in the SpaceX's launch area, could be a red flag for the Fish and Wildlife Department. This brings us to um, this one. The Fish and Wildlife Service, this is a post from Adrian Beale uh, at BC Cars Counter uh, in a statement to NASA spaceflight. Um, the FWS has up to 135 days. Fish and Wildlife Service has up to 135 days to submit the final biological opinion to the FAA. And this started in August. Three months um, is 90 days. Uh, so they have over four months to do this. Then they have up to up to about four months to do this, right? So 135 days. It's September now. It's mid-September. Or it's almost it's late September. October, November, December, four months is January. If they take the whole time to reevaluate this, we're not seeing a launch till next year. Um, so let's just Take a look at what they said. In August, the FAA sent a letter and draft biological assessment to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service requesting reinitiation of Endangered Species Act consultation. Under Section 7 of the Endangered Species Act, reinitiation of formal consultation is required when a project and its impacts change significantly. The amount of take issued previously um, is exceeded. We have new information on listed species not previously considered, or a new species is listed. Uh, reinitiation involving major changes in uh, effects analysis or changes in the service's biological opinion are addressed fully in a new consultation. For SpaceX, reinitiation with FAA, uh, we are considering the operation of a water deluge system. Like I was talking about before, all this new water that they're introducing to this area, it could be detrimental and it could be, uh, it could hamper um, any sort of launches going forward. So this is what this post is about from the FAA. Um, for SpaceX re initi uh, initiation, the service is currently discussing the project details with FAA staff to understand the extent of these new effects. Um, once the service reviews FAA's final biological assessment and deems it complete, consultation will be reinitiated. We have 135 days to issue a final biological opinion now, this is the kicker. This is the thing that might set SpaceX back uh, a while. At any time, the FAA and the service can agree to extend that time if for some reason we need to gather further information or new information is presented. So if there's, like they said, they have new information on listed species not previously considered or a new species is listed. Uh, the amount of take issued previously is exceeded. Um, 
and the project require uh, and the formal consultation is required when a project and its impacts change significantly. So the water deluge system is a pretty significant change from SpaceX to the Boca Chica area, to the Starbase area. And um, it could, even though they had it in their initial FONSI agreement, um, that they were going to build one of these things, there's a difference between hypothetically what it's going to do uh, they have an idea of what it's going to do to the environment and also what it actually does to the environment. So the FAA, Fish and Wildlife Service, they're all going to look into this and see what is actually happening at Starbase. Because if it doesn't work out well for SpaceX, like I said before, we could be waiting until next year for a launch of Starship. And that's not fun. <laughs> I want this to work. I want it to, I, I like as much as I, as much as I don't want to wait, I completely understand why they're doing this. I completely understand why we're doing, why they're doing this. And, um, you know, Michael Maxey says EPA wants a toxicity analysis, um, before, uh, for the deluge runoff, so expect another S, uh, static fire booster nine to get samples. That's a possibility. Yeah, I mean, ship twenty five is destacked. Um, SpaceX has said, Nathy, uh, Nathy, uh, Kathy Leaders um, has said that they destacked ship twenty five for final preparations for IFT two, and part of that could be the final preparations of. Uh, you know, booster nine, maybe they have to do another test. Maybe they didn't do enough analysis and there could be a possibility that SpaceX needs to work with the Fish and Wildlife Service and just give it a little, a quick little blast again. Um, also, SpaceX has probably already done some of that. So there's a possibility that uh, SpaceX and the Fish and Wildlife Service are all, and the FAA, of course, are all working together and they have been working together for a long time. So, they're not enemies and they're not trying to fight each other or anything like that. Elon wants things done in Elon time, which is right now. He's, he's super impatient. Like the guy wants stuff done like as soon as possible, which I understand because he has this mission to go to Mars for humanity. Like he wants to start the system so we can get to Mars and live there. So every minute counts, every day counts. Artemis three, big push. Uh, the, you know, every day counts for that. And if they're held back by four months um, due to the Fish and Wildlife Service, um, that's four months that they don't have to launch other rockets and to get to a place where they can launch a prototype of a tanker or, you know, um, you know, of a, or a moon rocket. I mean, it's a, it's a huge deal for Elon and SpaceX to not have this time because as we know, it's been four months right now. And if SpaceX is ready, if the hardware is ready and every like software, everything's ready, the whole flight system's ready, they could be launching IFT2 if it weren't for the FAA and the Fish and Wildlife Service. So Elon looks at this and he goes, We're ready. Why don't we just, you know, we can't we can't launch this sucks. So, you know, in Elon's head, I'm sure he's thinking, like, let's just get this done. Uh, but he also understands and the the leaders, uh Kathy leaders. And also <laughs> Gwen Shotwell, um, the leaders of Starbase and Elon all know that if they just launch, if they just send it, it could put them back, you know, years and years and years because it's super irresponsible. And it's just a silly thing to do. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs>